Welcome back to a new series with the old ass 2000 that is now the badass 2000. That's right. And we're going big this year. Our goal, our new goal is to try to beat the current official S2000 lap time record at Toronto Motorsports Park in what's locally called Super Street class, which basically just means a, a semi-slick tire class. That's correct. So we're thinking Hankook TDs on here and go sub 118. The current record is a 118.06. That's right, but still be able to drive this car to and from the track. It still has to be streetable for me. Yeah, absolutely. We're not turning into a trailer queen. We're just stepping up to the next class. We're targeting that time. Yeah, we need we need a new challenge, exactly. right? Yeah, the Jag was too easy. Yeah, you know, you know we're, we're just that good. We gotta go record hunting now. We so. wanna keep modifying the car. Yeah, we need an excuse, so here's our excuse. Quickest time so far that we know of officially is a 118.06. Yep. Let's go 117. 117.5? 117.5. <laughs> That's aggressive. But yeah, let's let's go 117.5. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. So you may be wondering why the S2000 is doing its greatest impression of a gangster lean here. <laughs> it's like a British touring car up on two wheels. I that, like it. That's right. That's because I've already gone ahead and pulled the old high flow cat out. And that's because I need to install a wide band O2 sensor. And why do we need to install well, that? Well, bam, because AEM Infinity, the super powerful ECU that's gonna make plenty of jam with our existing bolt-ons, and it's also gonna be the brains behind our future, well, we, right. can we say we've already of teased Of course, them? yes. The ITBs. Yes, the Gen V so ITBs. This is gonna be, like you said, the brains of our operation for that. Yep. Uh, but before we go installing ITBs and anything else, we wanna test it to see what kind of power we can make yeah. with just the existing bolt-ons and see, you know, upgrade into an ECU, what that actually gives you. Exactly, how much room is there to grow with just basic bolt-ons and then we'll go step up to the big boy stuff afterward. And this lets us do all of that. Exactly, so let's get to it. I gotta do some welding. If you've been watching the AS2000 series, you've probably seen me already install an O2 bung into this pipe. So this time around though, I'm installing it in front of the catalytic converter because that's what AEM requires. Uh, this is gonna be a pretty simplistic job. You gotta take this bung, drill a hole. I've already got the drill ready to go and then we'll do some welding. I don't think that's big enough yet. That's what she oh. said. <laughs> oh. Damn. <laughs> Straight into the Gen V box. That is bad. That is bad. God damn. No! Have filter! Done, what have you done? Our filter is metal. Don't damage the filter, PT. Metal shavings! <laughs> Not good. It's okay. Pretty baby. It's okay. <laughs> we love you still. <laughs> All right. All right, back to work. Let's get this done here. Yeah, that'll go. So why are you heating it up? I don't know, you know? Just because it looks cool? You're giving it that titanium finish? That's right. Everybody loves that burnt look, so I figured why not heat it up? No, the uh, actual reason for me to do this is the metal, we don't actually, it's because we don't have 240 volt here. So I gotta use the old 120 plug. And the hotter the metal is, the easier it is to weld. The bung is very thick. The pipe is not. Therefore, to make it easier to weld, you heat it up. Heat is always the answer, I hope. Until you have too much of it and you blow a hole through the pipe? Not with this heat. Alright. That if you're using an acetylene torch, then yeah, you might run into problems. But right. this, you can heat this all day long. Your little barbecue propane tank there. Alright. She's good and hot? Uh, she might be a little too hot. Goddamn. See, I'm even so lazy that I don't cut my filler rod down to size. Just go full length. I'm just full amateur on this. Come on, let's get serious. Yep. Let's not pretend it is what it isn't. 
it's all about penetration, all right? <laughs> you, can, you can make it look good, but the penetration is key. <laughs> oh, and it burned my helmet. All that heat now. Falling apart. Penetration is key, but burning your helmet's dangerous, Pete. Yeah, I know. Don't put your helmet somewhere where it's too hot. <laughs> You no pressure. So Pete, uh, why is there a giant rod sticking out of your bung? <laughs> My bum or uh, your, your bung hole? Bung. Your, your bung hole. Yes. Why is there a flappy well, rod in your bung hole? I sometimes get a little lazy in terms of holding it, so I figure this is the best way to do it. That's how the pros do it? Yeah, of course. So Pete, are we done yet? All right, we're done, finally. That only took like, what, 20 minutes to weld in a bung, but... Uh, Felt like an hour to me. Yeah, now. I bet. Well, that's what happens when you're behind the camera. Okay. So now that this is done, we'll put the O2 sensor in, and then we gotta run a wiring harness up into the cabin from this. And then we can hook up the infinity. So while Ken's over there scrubbing an oil pan clean and Pete's under the car installing the cat, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of some of the things we like best about the AM Infinity. Starting with the fact that it has a lot of very clever engine protection systems built into it. We like that, or I like that, because I've blown up a whole bunch of Honda engines in my day, and this should help stop me from doing that. It does it by monitoring a bunch of key parameters like a knock sensor, air fuel ratio, temperatures, pressures. It even looks at, at revs to try to prevent an over rev situation. And because it has this super powerful 200 megahertz processor, which can do something like 400 million instructions per second, which is a staggering number, it can monitor all of that stuff incredibly quickly and literally prevent a problem from happening before the old kaboom happens. So you actually get to define how it reacts when it starts to see things that look outside of spec. So you can literally say, okay, if temperatures get too high, limit engine speed to this RPM, or if it starts to detect any knock, then limit RPM to this level. So it, it, it can literally protect the engine how you define it, which is very cool. So we'll have Sasha tune all that in for us. We also like, like the fact, of course, that it's a plug and play system. Uh, we like things that are as simple to install as possible. This comes with a harness that will literally interface with the Honda's uh, existing harness, plug right into our, our main unit here. The, uh, the air fuel sensor that Pete's already wired up all plugs in too. So it should be a super easy install. And uh, we can talk a little bit later about the volumetric, of, volumetric efficiency approach to tuning because I think I've geeked out enough for you right now. While Pete was in the car reinstalling the cat, he noticed an oil leak and to fix that leak, we, we meaning him, had to remove the drain plug on the oil pan, which meant oil change. So on the upside, it also means we have an excuse to put in our new Valvoline Pro V racing oil. This is the good stuff, boys and girls. This is what they use in NASCAR. Hendrix Motorsports, probably the most dominant team in NASCAR over the last 10 years, runs this stuff and we're gonna put it in the AS2000. You might think that's an odd comparison, but you know what? NASCAR engines rev to like 9,500 RPM. This sucker revs to 9,000 RPM. So really, they're the same thing. Yeah, they make 900 horsepower and we make 200, but whatever. Pro-V going in. Look at that stuff. You can, you can just smell that it's racing oil, can't you? It's got all those extra special secret sauces in there that make it more durable and high temperature and high shear loads. That's so. This baby's built for the long haul, man. In NASCAR, they run this oil for, well, you ever heard of the 500, the Indy 500? That's 500 miles, kids. This oil has to last 500 miles at 9,000 RPM. Where can people buy this? Ah, good question, Pete. Um, you gotta go to teamvalvoline.com and you sign up, there's no cost to sign up 
and uh, there's actually a bunch of cool stuff you can do on the site to learn more about the oil. They got spec sheets on there with uh, all kinds of super detailed data on the oil. They'll even, they have a, a hotline that you can call and they'll actually help you choose the right oil weight for your engine. And um, the prices are awesome too if you join up and there's literally no cost to joining. So it's, as far as we can tell, there's no downside to it. You get access to the same engineers that actually design this oil for NASCAR. So yeah, man, go check it out. I think it's, it's pretty unique. I don't know of any other oil company in the world doing something like this right now. So pretty excited to have access to it. So with the wideband O2 sensor wire now inside the cabin, our job here is actually done. We're not going to be installing the AM Infinity into the car at this moment because we need to drive to the dyno. And to drive to the dyno, we want to make sure that it's on the stock ECU so we don't run into any hiccups. When we get there, we've just got a, the adapter harness to install and then the in Infinity ECU. And then the real fun stuff begins, which means tuning and setting it up. So that means we're off to the dyno to see our man from On Point Dyno, Sasha Anise. All right, Pete, what happened to the splitter? I don't know what you're talking about. Looks perfectly fine to me. Looks like you may have uh, modified our, and by our, I mean my excruciatingly awesome hard work on the splitter. Well, I don't know. I feel like it was too pretty and the gods above said, no, we shall cast a piece of metal that will damage the splitter on the highway. And that is exactly what happened. And now we have a not so clean splitter. It's okay, you're gonna fix it, right? Yeah, Kevin says it can be fixed. It won't be as pretty, but it can be fixed. <laughs> 